This discussion is purely for educational purposes. We're here to learn, not to encourage or enable any questionable behavior. Let's explore the digital world more completely, with open minds and a strong sense of ethics, ready to appreciate both its complexity and its potential. So, what is a paywall? You might have heard the term before, but let's break it down in detail. In simple terms, a paywall is like a virtual barrier on a website that restricts access to certain content, requiring you to pay or subscribe to get through. It's a digital version of a locked door, keeping some information behind it unless you're willing to pay. You've probably encountered one before. Maybe you're reading an interesting article, and just as you get invested, a message appears asking you to subscribe or sign up. It can be a bit frustrating, but it's a common experience online. There are actually several types of paywalls, each with its own approach. Hard paywalls are the strictest. They block all content for non-subscribers, so you can't read anything unless you pay. On the other hand, soft or metered paywalls are more flexible. They let you read a limited number of articles for free each month before asking you to subscribe. This gives you a taste of the content before making a decision. For example, the New York Times uses a metered model, allowing casual readers some access before the paywall appears. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal is famous for its hard paywall, which means almost all content is locked unless you're a paying subscriber. There's also the freemium model, where some articles or videos are free, but premium or exclusive pieces are reserved for subscribers only. This model tries to attract a wide audience while still offering incentives to pay. For publishers, the paywall is a crucial tool for balancing the need to reach a large audience with the need to generate revenue. It's a constant balancing act between accessibility and profitability. Technically, a paywall is powered by scripts that check your subscription status or track how many articles you've read. These scripts are the backbone of the paywall system. They use cookies and other tracking technologies to monitor your activity, deciding whether to show you the full article or block your access based on your usage. This automated digital gatekeeper has become central to the business of online information, quietly working in the background every time you visit a news site. While the concept seems simple, paywalls have a huge impact on how we access news, research, and knowledge online. They influence what information is freely available and what remains behind closed doors. Understanding how paywalls work is key to understanding the economics of digital media and why some information is free while other content comes at a price. Paywalls aren't meant to annoy readers or block access just for the sake of it. Instead, they're a direct response to a crisis that's been brewing in the publishing world for years. For decades, newspapers and magazines relied on selling physical copies and ad space to fund their journalism, supporting large teams of reporters, editors, and photographers. But the arrival of the internet changed everything. Suddenly, information felt free and people expected to access news online without paying, which completely undermined the old business model. Digital ad revenue never came close to replacing what print once brought in. Tech giants like Google and Facebook now dominate online advertising, taking the lion's share of profits and leaving publishers with just a fraction. As a result, newsrooms across the world have faced devastating layoffs, deep budget cuts, and even total closures as their revenue streams dried up. Yet, Investigative journalism and local reporting are more important than ever. These stories require significant resources, salaries, travel expenses, legal support, and time to dig deep. The paywall emerged as a necessary solution. If you value in-depth, reliable reporting, you're asked to help pay for it, just as you would for any other valuable service. So when you see a paywall, remember, it's not just a barrier. It's a way to directly fund the creation of quality content and support the people behind it. Your subscription pays journalists, photographers, editors, and even the developers who keep the website running smoothly. The paywall is an attempt to rebuild a broken economic model, shifting support from advertisers to readers, and ensuring that journalism remains independent and sustainable. Without this support, quality journalism struggles to survive, and important stories may go untold. Supporting paywalls means supporting the future of trustworthy, fact-checked information in a world full of misinformation. In the digital age, we need new ways to fund the work that keeps us informed and connected. That's why paywalls matter, and why your support makes a real difference. Let's cautiously examine some basic paywall bypass methods, not to exploit, but to understand vulnerabilities. The simplest is using incognito or private browsing mode which resets cookies and can trick metered paywalls into thinking you're a new visitor. Another method is stopping a web page from fully loading, 
Sometimes hitting escape at the right moment lets you see the article before the paywall script runs. Some users copy the headline into a search engine. Publishers often let search crawlers see full articles, so clicking from search results or viewing cached pages can reveal content. These techniques exploit the balance publishers try to strike between visibility and revenue. They're easy to try, but not always reliable. Each method highlights a different vulnerability in paywall design. Understanding these loopholes helps us see the challenges publishers face. The arms race between access and restriction is ongoing. Awareness of these tricks is the first step toward better digital security. Now, let's talk about browser extensions, small programs that modify how websites behave. While most extensions are useful, some are designed specifically to bypass paywalls. These tools automate cookie deletion, block paywall scripts, or spoof referrer information to trick sites into granting access. They offer a seamless, unauthorized reading experience, but come with risks. Many are unvetted and can contain malware, keyloggers, or crypto miners. Installing a shady extension can compromise your security far more than a paywall ever could. Publishers and extension developers are locked in a constant battle. When one side adapts, the other responds. The use of these tools is risky and often short-lived. The appeal is convenience, but the cost can be high. Always weigh the risks before installing anything that promises free access. For the technically inclined, bypassing paywalls can mean manipulating website code using browser developer tools. Client-side paywalls send the full article to your browser, but hide it with code, CSS, or JavaScript overlays. By inspecting the page, users can delete the paywall pop-up or change styles to reveal hidden text. This requires basic knowledge of HTML and CSS, but leaves no trace since changes are local. However, publishers are aware and increasingly use server-side paywalls, which only send partial content to non-subscribers. In those cases, no amount of code tinkering will reveal the full article. It simply isn't there. This shift makes bypassing much harder and more technical. The battle between user ingenuity and publisher security continues. Understanding these methods highlights the complexity of digital content protection. The landscape is always evolving. Bypassing paywalls isn't just a technical challenge, it's risky. Many bypass tools are vectors for malware, putting your personal data and finances at risk. Installing unverified software can lead to stolen passwords, identity theft, or ransomware. Legally, bypassing a paywall violates a site's terms of service and can be considered theft of services or copyright infringement. While prosecution is rare for individuals, large-scale or repeated violations can attract legal action. The Computer Fraud and Abuse Act in the U.S. is a powerful law that can apply to unauthorized access. The risks, both digital and legal, far outweigh the benefits of free content. Think twice before taking shortcuts. There are ethical, often free ways to access quality journalism. Subscribing directly supports creators and keeps journalism alive. Many outlets offer discounts, digital-only packages, or student rates. Public libraries provide free access to digital newspapers and magazines, just use your library card. Free trials and promotional offers let you sample content before committing. Signing up for newsletters can unlock select articles. Non-profit news organizations like NPR, BBC, and Reuters offer high-quality content for free. Supporting these sources helps sustain a healthy information ecosystem. Ethical options are plentiful if you know where to look. Choose to support, not undermine, the creators you value. We've explored the tools and risks of paywall bypassing, but the real issue is ethical. Journalism and analysis are the result of hard work and expertise. Professional reporting is vital for democracy and accountability. Bypassing paywalls may seem harmless, but when done en masse, it undermines the organizations we rely on. It leads to newsroom cuts and news deserts, weakening our access to trustworthy information. Every choice to bypass is a vote against sustainable journalism. Respect the work and the creators behind it. Use your library, sign up for free trials, or read from nonprofit sources. If a publication consistently informs or entertains you, consider subscribing. Supporting journalism is an investment in a more informed society. The future of knowledge depends on our choices today. Let's value the ecosystem of ideas that shapes our world. Choose to be a supporter, not just a consumer.